Hey, and welcome to episode 98 of Antenna Heads, where we cover the best of TV from today and this year. I am Brian Cassis, joined by Alex Arujo. What's going on, Brian? How you doing? It's he's good doing to be here. He's doing his best mime over there. But what am I miming? Something, it looks like you're juggling tits. You got it. This guy knows his mimes. You've got the eye of the tiger. Oh, fuck that. Fuck all of it. And Just- Christina Arujo is here. I am with Krusty the Clown, apparently. Hey, hey. I don't get it. Oh, who's this? Hey, I don't know. I, I, the the intro is the one part of the show I don't listen to because I'm busy going. All right, not. what's first? What are we gonna do? Transition. Come on, funny joke, funny joke. Uh, that's what I do this whole show. I think of nothing. Hence, I hear everything. That's what she does this whole show. Uh, what's going on, guys? It's been another week since we last spoke about television anyway most We're, of the day we usually speak about hamburgers and uh, i had a fantastic hamburger today i bi- had hamburgers for dinner today too bison burger ah uh, it's not really a hamburger well there's no ham in a hamburger anyway. no but a traditional hamburger is beef beef uh what is bison bison is a different animal it's beef if you look here it's on my a beefed burger okay <laughs> That is a reference. It's not a cow. He a beef. No, he doesn't. That is a reference to a podcast that Chris doesn't watch, but watched part of, yeah. and I love OSW Review. They review uh, old uh, professional wrestling shows. Give him a shout out. By all means, watch their videos. They're great. Jay was, Hunter and all the boys. It was not great. a beef burger. No. No. Um, I, I don't know. I, I would have said. I would assume bison is a type of beef. No. Doesn't matter. You had a bison burger. Was it good? Oh, it was oh, fantastic. Where'd you go? Uh, I don't remember the name. Hmm. We were down on Wall Street today, and we were doing traffic analysis. It was the four of us. It was, um, and we had a break in between, which we needed because we're so tired from standing. Was we're standing and counting people for two hours, and um, so we decided to go out to get some need for lunch, and then we got caught. Thankfully, we decided to go indoors for seating because all of a sudden the skies opened up, and it was like. It poured. Tor- rent- torrential downpour. It was a For weird hour. Solid there. five minutes of torrential downpour only in the city, but it was just insane. Here it was for like quite a while. No, it was only five minutes. It was really weird. And then the sun came out for a while. Then it started raining again. It sucked. But what do you know? I can't remember where we were. I just we needed to go in somewhere quick because it started to drizzle. I was like, oh, that place. And it was fantastic. Been a weird day. But been an exciting week for Brian. Brian also got notified that he's going to have quite the big news coming up over at uh, B911B Photo on Instagram, B911B.com. I What's went, going on there, Brian? I went to go shoot Manhattan Henge, and that was a, f- a disaster. Well, it wasn't a, like it was terrible. It just didn't show up. So I, um. Manhattan stayed m- hidden. Yeah. <laughs> Sure. This is why I make the jokes on the show. Shut up, Al. <laughs> um, there, uh, my photo got featured already. Um, and then I got a request from Nikon, their USA page to feature it. So I was all excited about that. And you're a Nikon guy. Well, well, that's the reason I, I tag everything Nikon. I mean, there's gotta be somebody who took a photo that's on Nikon's Instagram page that took it with like a Canon or a Sony. No. I'm sure they've made that mistake. No, cause if you're, Everyone. if you're a Canon shooter, um, the Canon follower is, um, is, they have more, um, they have more followers, I believe. Yeah, but I mean. Th- yeah, but you could tag something Nikon. Yeah, no. I mean, I could tag whatever I want Sephora. It doesn't mean it came from Sephora. Yeah, I could tag a photo of me juggling tits and, and is, they'll probably take it. You wish. That is probably not going to yes. happen unless you put a male nipple over those tits. That's true. What, what, what if it's guy tits? Guy tits are fine, apparently. Guy tits are apparently. <laughs> I'll bet, I'll tell you they are. So wrong. It's true. I mean, you can I put agree. guy tits on Instagram and they don't care, but it's apparently true. you show a woman's tits and it's a big Sexism. Deal. So I don't know if you've noticed, worst. they've actually been putting, um, men, a man nipple and editing it on a woman's tit. I haven't seen it. Yeah. And it's apparently okay. That's fine. That's ridiculous. Because of the female nipple is, uh, derogatory, as where the male nipple <laughs> is great. You need to like, Hey, of course, this, this extends beyond use. Instagram, though. Look at television. You can show a, a shirtless man all the time. You can show it at 8 o'clock on ABC for, with Dr. Ken. But uh, a show a shirtless woman? No, the FCC comes over to your house. It is kind of ridiculous. I don't want them here. They come over here, and they're like, put male nipples on her, or you're going to jail. It's a sh- real shame. It is kind of ridiculous. Chris, how was your week? It was okay. Yeah, not really. But it's what fun. are you talking about? You got you got cards coming in. Yeah, you, fancy ass uh, throwing cards, or I don't know how. I don't know <laughs> like how businesses just, work. Just call me Gambit. <laughs> I am. Yeah, you'd probably make a better Gambit than uh, what's his face, horse face Tatum. 
Shannon Tatum is playing Gambit. Okay. I haven't seen it. Still don't like it. I don't like the idea of it. Nor do I. But yeah, you got your business cards in the mail the other day. Came out nicely. They came out okay. Uh, Look for photos of those over at Chris Conker's on Instagram. (laughs) Probably. (laughs) Eventually, they'll make it there. They'll make it. I already have the pictures. There you go. Just putting it up. And uh, of course, many exciting posts going up at ChrisConkers.com all the time. All the time. Well, folks, we're here once again. It's another one of those weeks where we're going to continue our march right through the fall's upcoming shows. It's the 2015 Upfronts report card once again, and we're going right back to ABC. So last week, we covered ABC's dramas, but there was one little scraggler. Scraggler? Is no. that a word? Straggler. No. Straggler. No, scraggle. Like, like scraggle puss. Like the cat. Yeah, that's not... That's anyway, not there was one little scraggler, and uh, <laughs> we're going to cover it. It's a drama. It's called Wicked City, but then we're going to turn our attention to the... Not about Boston. <laughs> what? Not about Boston. Not about Boston. I don't know why Chris felt like saying that, it's but... wicked. Oh. Okay. That would have actually been probably the title for like a comedy set in Boston. But it's much better than a comedy set in Boston. Uh, but then we're going to turn our attention to ABC's comedies, cover those. There are four new ones coming up, so uh, we'll give those the once over. But let's kick it off right now with Wicked City, the last drama coming from ABC. Um, Brian, you want to tell us about Wicked City? Not really. Okay. I, I did not. I. You know what? I don't that know. That wasn't what it was. really a question. No. It's. 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 <laughs> no. It said. Do you redundant. want to tell us about? Yes. But I, I, I'll you, take it. You I, let me because I, I haven't it, done it, these in a while. You want? You meant it was rhetorical. It, no. It's redundant. Okay. It's obvious. Yeah, I've said it so many times. You should know it by now. Words, just go. Let me say this about Wicked City. It's set. <laughs> it's set in Los Angeles. <laughs> no. It is not set in Boston. It's um. It's set in Los Angeles, and basically it takes the anthology style that's so popular nowadays. We've seen it in American Horror Story. Uh, we've seen it in American Crime on ABC also. So basically every season there will be a new cast of characters, a new story being told. And this one will take place in a different time period in LA's history. Now this first season takes place in 1982, I believe. I think so. 82. A year of some very important births. Uh, Not mine. In terms of our listenership. Yeah, important. <laughs> <laughs> Meow. <laughs> woof, woof. Scragglepuss. <laughs> Scragglepuss. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna put in some Scragglepuss later. Uh, that's actually, I don't uh, even know what that means. It's not even Scragglepuss, it's, um, <laughs> no, it's what is the name of that cat? <laughs> oh god, it's, um, Snagglepuss. Snaggle- <laughs> S- Snaggletooth or Snagglepuss. Snaggletooth. <laughs> That'd be a terrible name for a cat. Oh okay, Wicked City, getting back to it. Um, it's set in Los Angeles, as I said. Set in 1982, and it basically focuses on this serial killer who uh, picks up women in clubs and kills them. Not with clubs, <laughs> sadly. Uh, stabs them in the back of the head while he's getting Depends. a blowjob. No, but that's, that's, that was one. That's the big one interesting example. one. That's the one uh, jokes that we made on for centuries to come. Um, and it's basically the police trying to capture the serial killer. Now, things take an interesting turn, however, where one of his potential victims seems to become his girlfriend by the end of the trailer, where they're dating regularly. Um, he calls her because he wants to go out with her. I think the turning point was she, he finds out that she has kids, and he evidently really loves kids, so he's not going to stab her in the back of the head. Um, eventually, uh, their storyline will take a Bonnie and Clyde turn, where uh, she's helping him commit his murders. And of course, uh, Thaisa? It's the hardest name to yes. say. Yes. Thaisa Farminga, right? That you killed. Farminga? I think it's Farmiga. Farmiga? Like, I think so. like, like, a, like an ant? It's Farmiga. Yes. Uh, from American Horror Story. She'll also fo- uh, factor in because she seems like she's a younger potential victim for, uh, the serial killer. Now, I thought the strong point of this trailer were really the scenes with the serial killer. Um, I thought Ed Westwick. Westwick. I was going to get that one right. I don't know that you Pausing for dramatic effect. Uh, Ed Westwick from uh, Gossip Girl does a really nice job here because he's got this. this, He's British, uh, by the way. Is he British? Yeah. I couldn't tell. 
uh, he's got this nice, threatening, menacing quality to him where you're never really sure what he's going to do next, but you're always watching him. You always have your attention on him. And while it's not the most original way to play a serial killer, it's worlds better than we saw on Aquarius, where... um. I can't even remember the serial killer's name now. And he's the most famous serial killer in the world. Uh, you can't remember it either, can you? Uh, jo- J- Manson. Charlie Manson. Yeah, I was like, it's Charles something. Where, uh, where Charlie Manson, the, uh, the character who's played by the actor. <laughs> I'm <laughs> yes, falling apart here. Characters tend to be This is all going to be cut out, by the way. No. Yes. All your. As opposed to the guy on, uh, Aquarius who does a terrible job playing a menacing Murderer. I mean, that's the Sunset Strip, except me for who I am. I mean, you can be anybody you want to be out here. You see what I'm saying? That's so true. I'm so sorry. It's probably my babysitter. You got kids? Yeah, boy and a girl. Do you like kids? I absolutely love children. Unsolved murders. Our guy's done this before, maybe he's in here. Let's go. radio stations and dedicate a song before he murders his victims. Close your eyes. Yeah, that sounds like my guy. Don't breathe. No. It's okay. It's just a game. What do you think of uh, Ed Westwick here, Chris? I thought it was really good because in terms of the role, you kind of have to find that sweet spot between charm and creepy and i think he finds it <laughs> yep he finds that sweet spot. that's that's how you get all the ladies intended. charm it and creepy it wasn't intended i promise um no yeah i think he played it really well mm-hmm. i mean from what we saw in the trailer um i i do think he was very well cast um and that's that's pretty much what i think about that i think it's also going to be a fun show to watch over time because this first episode is largely going to be, you know, him starting his murders and him meeting, uh, this Bonnie and Clyde, this Bonnie character. Uh, her name isn't read, actually Bonnie. Did you read that though? Yes, that it's on. She's going to help him. Yeah. Cause I didn't necessarily get that. Right. There's like one little clip that kind of, you know, hints at that where, where she's like with him and another girl. Mm-hmm. But yeah, this, no, this trailer doesn't really lead you down that path, but. Trust me, this is where it's going. Uh, the, the Bonnie character is actually named Betty Smith, so they, they've spelled that wrong. Uh, <laughs> she's played by, um, did any of this stay Erica the Christensen. same? Huh? Did any of this stay the same from what we saw? No, I mean, I think what we saw is just the beginning of that Bonnie and Clyde story, them getting together. There was some, some, uh, recasting done that confused that, me and Chris. And angered Chris. It did. Um, it really pissed me off, too. The not for lead- nothing. Basically, the lead detective that we see in the trailer is no longer the lead detective. Nope. Um, originally, he was played by Adam Rothenberg from Ripper Street. Now he's played by Jeremy Sisto from Suburgatory. So not happy about that. I can say both of those things fine. I thought I thought Adam Rothenberg was great in the trailer. Mm-hmm. I mean, you don't you definitely don't get as much from his side, but I thought, unlike. Um, Unlike David Duchovny, I kind of thought that he he did serious without it just being like ridiculous. Yeah, like I kind of I believed him as a detective, and I believe that he wanted to stop these murders. And, and it should be said, we don't see a lot of him in this trailer, but I think the problem with David Duchovny's performance in Aquarius is that it's so unfeeling and disconnected that you really don't care for the character at all you don't want to see him succeed all that much i I feel like they they do try really hard to make him seem like he's not completely out of touch with this young like you know this new movement like Mm -hmm. he he gets smoking pot he gets like where they're coming from like he is sort of in between both worlds even though he's probably seen as more stern and more old-fashioned. Especially compared to his partner. But it's just like that wishy-washiness. You just don't really know how to see him. Mm-hmm. Whereas with this, I mean, there, you know, he seems like a serious detective who's like on his shit and like, right. you know. 
Want to uh, get Brian, what did you think? Sorry, Chris. Uh, this was kind of like, I don't know. To me, it was a little messy and just it seemed to go in some weird directions. I understand they're trying to be a little edgy with the um, the main character in terms of here's his soft spot or his humanizing point. Um, and, you know, in, in the same way you mentioned, I don't want to re- rehash it, the Bonnie and Clyde effect um, mm-hmm. of what this could be. Um, that is intriguing. Um, it's just, I think it was a bad edit on this. And I think they realized that perhaps they didn't need or didn't have the pieces they wanted, or maybe they need to change some things and why they recast certain people. Um, but as I watch this, I think the same thing is going to happen that happened to Aquarius and that it's on a network television, uh, channel and it's going to be so limited in what they can really show. And unless it has extremely good storytelling, and dialogue or compelling acting to make up for how the story can actually unfold, mm-hmm. I think it's going to fall short. But I think it's going to be a fun story to watch unfold because I think the the relationship between Jeremy Sisto and um, – not Jeremy Sisto. Jeremy Sisto is a detective. Ed Westwick and uh, Erica Christensen who plays that Bonnie character, Betty. Uh, I think the way that they grow into a, a team – you know, a crime, a, a team that commits crimes, I think it's going to be really interesting to watch over the season or possibly it, seasons. It could be. Be. Yeah. But I'm very cautious in the fact that they've already started to recast, mm-hmm. which means that perhaps it's not as strong as they wanted it to be. I don't think it tested well. I think the one for sure, the edit that we saw the upfront was not good. I thought it was just messy. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I don't know. It was just, it was trying too hard or definitely was one of the better shows if you compare it to the last, you know, all the, the dramas, the, yeah. the remaining dramas. But I think if I had watched it, with those, it would have done better than watching it on its own. Standalone, it didn't. It kind of weakened it a little bit mm-hmm. because I got to pick a little bit, and it's been a week since we watched or discussed the other ones. Yep. I think if I had watched it with the group, it would probably would have been so much stronger. Um, but I don't think this is their best drama. Erica Christensen, of course, is from uh, Parenthood, and she's been in a lot of other stuff. Swim fan. Swim <laughs> that. Yeah. That's what everybody knows her from. Oh uh, yeah, swim fan. Um, she was well, super she was, fucking creepy in no, no, Swim Fan. She was very good in this too, in in what little you see her in. Yeah, she is really good. Uh, she that that's true though. I I didn't I didn't see a lot of Swim Fan, but she is pretty creepy. Yeah, she's no eye candy. She she's a bit of eye candy if you ask me. I, that's part of the reason I watched Parenthood for that, as long as remember, I did. I couldn't remember what the name of the the girl that was in. Oh, uh, Victoria Justice. Oh, okay. So you just said eye candy. Yeah. I thought you meant literally like the term eye candy. No, no, because she's clearly eye candy. Take a look at her. Uh, this show left me with a couple of questions. One of which being, exactly how many blowjob murders were there in the 80s? I don't think that they were all blowjobs. I really hope they are. I don't think it's like, hey. Well, the problem is also. Give me a blowjob. They so find, I can murder you. They find her tied up afterwards. So mm-hmm. There's some sort of necrophilia going yeah. on. So it's not a, it essentially could be a blowjob murder every time, but they wouldn't be able to tell it was a <laughs> blowjob murder. Now, getting back to blowjob murders, I hope that that is like his staple and like the, the press gives him like a, like a saucy press murderer name. You know, like how they always come up with like, Names. Joe Blow. No, I've got three here. I've got, uh, cause I spent literally. It wasn't bad though. Come Joe on. Joe Blow. Eh, it doesn't capture but the fact the that he's menacing. Wait, wait. But Joe doesn't blow. No, Joe gets Come on, Chris. Blow. Like the, like the blowjob butcher. You know, something where they add that menacing quality to him. Or the oral sex slayer. Or, my personal favorite, the headhunter. Nice. <laughs> right? Very good. That's the one. Done. The show's over. That's the one you run up the flagpole. Podcast over. <laughs> So, besides like the casting yeah. and the, just the, I really like the idea for the show, but mm-hmm. this reminds me a lot of Stalker, with a lot of elements of uh, the Fall. Though I don't think it's it's ever going to get to, you know, that level that the Fall has. But it's I mean, in terms of like the necrophilia aspect and the serial killer. Who goes after women and like, it's, it's very, sim- and then has a detective like chasing, well, obviously the detective chasing him down, but. Mm-hmm. That'd be great if there was like, if there was a, a show about a murderer and there was no detective, like nobody went after him. No. He just kept just, killing people. It's called Dexter. But there, people were investigating him. At times, but then it's like, nope. Yeah. Nope. Because he's killing bad guys. Um, it just kind of felt like Stalker mm. to me. Like there's that tension 
at times. It's that kind of a show. I feel like people who liked Stalker would watch this on um, network TV. Mm -hmm. The... I understand what Brian was saying about, you know, obviously you can't show as much as you would on a cable network, but I feel like there are certain shows that get away with quite a bit when it comes to things like this. Like Hannibal got away with so much visually. Um, so, I mean, it's a different network. It's interesting to see where they're going to be able to take this. Um, it should be said, this will premiere October 27th. That's a Tuesday at 10. Ooh, right before Halloween. Right before Halloween. Very spooky, spooky, yeah. scary, blowjob murders. Um, it's got some stiff competition, though. Limitless. <laughs> yeah. Pun intended. That's a, that is a pun. Uh, <laughs> Limitless on CBS, which will be the, uh, the TV adaption of that movie. Um, that's, that's on the t- same time slot. And actually, Best Night Ever, which is going to be that Neil Patrick Harris variety show. That we talked about a couple of, a while back. That's also going to be at the same time. No. But actually, in November, that switches over to Chicago Fire. So Hell yes. Stronger competition. Hell yes. Maybe. Oh, people like Neil Patrick Harris. Let's go to oh. ratings on this. Chris, what'd you have this at? I have this at a 2.5. I also had this at a 2.5. I had it at a solid 2. I just, just, I don't know. Fair enough. But- very, very, I don't know, conservative about it, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, but the idea that they recast. Uh, still. I'm really upset about it. Banging on about it. Cause it was like, Fuck I them. was super impressed by the cast that they had. And you don't just replace him with that guy from Suburgatory. That guy, his name is I don't, Jeremy I don't something. Give a fuck it's Jeremy's what his sister. name is. It makes me sad. It's the one name I can say correctly. Let's I didn't leave it alone. I even like Ripper Street and I knew that he was good. I like Ripper Street. I don't like it. I tried well, finishing the first Well, you can watch that because the first season's really good. He I won't gave be it honest. two shots and I couldn't make it. Let's move on now to the comedies. Make you laugh, make you chuckle, put smiles on kids' faces. That's what all this is about. That's why we do this podcast also, for children. Please don't play the last 20 minutes of blowjob talk for your kids, though. Or maybe if you do, maybe they'll... It's a good education. You want want them to hear it on the streets? We're the streets. No. There's probably a podcast called The Streets. Not that British rapper. I didn't even know that was a rapper. I'm I used to the- love the streets. Don't you remember? No. Oh, God. I'm going to play some for you later. Are you going to put some in? <laughs> Maybe. Oh, I'll tell you which song to put in. finding it. <laughs> All right. Let's, let's uh, push things forward. Stop it. Let's kick, off, the <laughs> let's kick off the comedies here with uh, something that made me laugh and then cry a whole lot. Dr. Ken. What part made... You, well, okay. I think I know what part made you laugh. But. The concept. Yeah. A- and what has happened to Ken Jong's career. Uh, thir- this is horrible. Dr. Ken. Uh, coming to ABC Fridays at 8.30. Chris. This is what happens when you cancel community. <laughs> yes, it is. Yeah. He's, no, community's still on... Uh, he's not on it anyway. He's not? I don't no, think so. and it's going to be a movie. And that's he it. should be able to live off of his money. He's got his money. He's got a medical degree. He should be fine. He's you don't have to do guy, bad shows like this. You went in the Italian accent over there. He's got his money. He's, he's got all his mula and his pudding. Chris. <laughs> it's in Portuguese. It's, it's, it's all Mediterranean, whatever. Chris, yes. tell us about Dr. Ken. So Dr. Ken is the new uh, Ken Jong show, as we were saying, uh, where he plays a father with two children. And uh, yeah, two. Yeah. And a doctor. I know, shockingly. I was going to say. Two kids. What the hell's going on here? There's no possible success if he only has two kids. He has a teenage daughter and a son who's in maybe middle school, Mm -hmm. elementary. uh, He looks like middle school. He looks like 10, 11, 12. Uh, And basically, it's just about dealing with his family, his kids growing up, and then being a doctor. And apparently, there's comedy somewhere in there. There's supposed to be comedy somewhere. What? This, This trailer opens. Yeah, with that's... with the, the voiceover of he's the wildest comedian of our time, one of all time of our time or all time all time. Okay, okay even I'm with... pretty sure all time is what they said. We might have to play it back. Maybe I misheard, but I had headphones in, so he's the wildest comedian of our time. 
There you go. We know who's right now. You guys do. I actually don't because we haven't, we haven't heard it yet. First of all, the wildest comedian of all time is Donald Trump. Everybody knows that. That guy's fucking hilarious. Second of all, yes, Ken Jong is known for his wild comedy, but there's none of that in this show. Yeah. I'm like, oh yeah, he's the wildest one, so we're gonna tame the fucking shit out of him. You, you took the one selling point of Ken Jong, his, 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 you know, his hatred of everything is really, he, he has this wonderful, way of just making everything against him and making everything his opponent when when he you know when he performs comedy you take all that out and you give him this stereotypical and i say stereotypical i mean cookie cutter in the, the plainest definition this, this idea which he created he's the co-creator of the show he's executive producing and he's writing on the show see but i feel just like, like christella i feel like they had to water the hell out of him to make him fit for ABC consumption because it's just not it wasn't right. going to work any other way but that's like taking a diamond and like and saying okay well you shine a bit too much let me oil this you this diamond up. is great but we need it for you know for holding a a, a table steady so we're going to flatten this diamond out okay great you made a flat diamond you've also destroyed the value of this diamond you're destroying the value of ken jong here that's a very good analogy yeah. thank you i like it thank you very much i can You're throw into diamonds sir no rough here shine bright <laughs> so many song choices um yeah i no, mean you, no you're gonna play the other one though all i'll play them all yeah. all the do you have enough you have enough shows <laughs> to get through link them all together all the show is is just like Really, really watered down. I mean, these are probably the scripts that ABC had lying around from Home Improvement that they never used. And they just changed, you know, Tool Man to Doctor. One of the jokes, one of the actual jokes is Ken Jong telling his, one of his patients that he's fat. And the only thing fatter than him is his lies. Yep. You have ankle swelling, shortness of breath, your thyroid's within normal limits. What's the diagnosis? You're fat. <laughs> But I barely eat. The only thing fatter than you are your lies. That's the joke. Yep. That's not a joke, though. That's just not funny. But didn't you hear the uh, audience. taped audience laughing? <laughs> didn't you hear the guy press play on the audience laughter? I thought there was a live audience. You could literally hear the click of that recording. A live captive audience. I mean, this is legitimately the replacement to Christella in every way. I, you know what? I don't know. This I don't is, know. Christella, Christella was, I think, was a, like, better than over this. the top. Like Christella, like you want emphasis on your words? I'll give you emphasis on your Christella words. Christella played. Oh, yeah. Kim Jong is just like let me. You said? Did you say Kim Jong? <laughs> he did. <laughs> that would be Ken. That would be a much better <laughs> show. <laughs> did I say it before too? I don't no, think I so. Don't I just heard it that Ken. one time. But geez, right, Ken. I'm just gonna call him Ken from he, now on. He's Korean though. Ken Jong is okay. Um, so is Kim. So he, is Kim. The problem is none of the humor feels authentic. It all just feels incredibly scripted and filtered. Like it's completely artificial, and it doesn't feel like Ken Jeong even believes that what he's saying is funny. No, and that's no. part of the problem. And then the yeah. fact that he's in complete control of this. Yeah. Well, supposed complete control. I think that's a move more for them to to say that he's the one that messed it up. When mm -hmm. I think, in fact, you're absolutely correct. They completely watered them down so they could fit it in at an 8 o'clock or an 8.30 family TJ, TGIF type show. Because mm -hmm. that's really what this is a poor attempt at being. It doesn't fit, though. No, I'm not saying it's a good no, fit. I mean, I'm saying it's a fit. poor yeah, attempt. I understand. I'm just saying it doesn't... He, he doesn't fit that clean family comedy and, and it, image. And but but said, he could, though, if he just... They let him, let him be zany and a little crazy. And you have... You know, the wife be the straight man. And, and I, that's the problem is you have, she's the straight man. The kids are, you know, whatever the kids, cause that's what they're supposed to be in the mm -hmm. show. But he's even more boring and bland than she is. And she's there by design. It's a comedy. You need, you can't have someone zany without having someone kind of balance. Right. She's the straight man. Yeah. Uh, but he's, it might as well be the straight man cause it's, it's boring. It's she's like also going to be a therapist on the show. Which, you know, Christ. hopefully she's the funny one and maybe he's... No. Hopefully she's the one that commits Ken Jeong she's after not. this act of... Please, I need to be heresy. committed after watching this. Uh, yeah, Chris. Um, also, side note, 
you know that they named his daughter Molly just so they could make that joke about ecstasy. Which right? is probably one of the few funny jokes. No. Yes. So that- Although it isn't the best drug joke we had no, in all of these comedies. That goes to probably even though I didn't want to say it at the time, but probably the better comedy. Yeah, we'll talk about that in Uncle Buck later. Um it's not a good show. I mean, uh, I could see this. This is probably going to have the exact path of Cristela. It's on Friday, so we'll get a full season, but it'll get canceled afterwards. I don't think it'll get a f- full season. I, I think, think it. Will. I don't think. I think it'll get a half season. It's got a good lead in with uh, Last Man Standing, which you know, it's a decent. It's Friday for, for Friday nights. I mean, you know, you're not asking it to. You can't do all blow that much Friday night. This anymore. is the ABC, correct? Yes, it they is. have Shark Tank. But you do have Shark Tank. I think so Shark, Tank, Shark is Tank is nine. So it'd be uh, this is in between Last Man Standing and yeah, yeah. This is probably not going to do as well as you think. Uh, even even the song choices in this trailer annoy the goddamn fuck out of me. We hear Megan Trainer's lips are moving. Uh, the second I heard it, I was like, Al's gonna hate this shit. Well, and uh, we song. we also hear Roar by Katy Perry. Yeah. So uh, yes, because a, a large part of this trailer is the son, uh, his, his young son, getting ready for a talent show because you know that that trope hasn't been used quite enough in kids shows lately. Um, where he performs a mime act to the tune of Katy Perry's Roar. And of course, at the end, the father, who thinks this is a stupid idea, gets up on stage and helps him in a time of, of trouble. Which is actually my favorite part of the whole thing. And that thing. was taken from, we saw last season was About, about a, a Boy. boy which is that, a couple of seasons ago. Which, please, I mean, and not like About a Boy originated. No, but to be no. fair, when I saw it, I thought About a Boy. And it was better done on About a Boy. It was done better on About a Boy. I will say that. Thank you. I mean, yeah, it's not, not saying good. a lot because this is doc- this this show is a piece of shit. There's also a point where Ken Jong does an impression of his father, which I found offensive. Because I, I, because his wife is like, "Oh, you sound like your father," and and he's like, "Oh, no, my father sounds like this," and just does. I, what I hope what he did was speak Korean. What Korean. I'm thinking he did was just make Korean like sounds. No. Maybe. No, I'm pretty sure they're actual words. I would hope so, but still, if any other. And character say, that wasn't Korean did that on a show. K- kudos lawsuit. to you for saying Korean and not saying Chinese. I, I looked it up just so I wouldn't make a faux pas. Molly's growing up, Ken. We gotta give her some freedom. Kids don't need freedom. They need... I was the opposite of freedom. Duct tape. They need to be taped down. You sound like your father. <laughs> no, I don't. My father sounds like this. I don't know I don't know Speaking of faux pas, this goddamn show. Let's go to ratings. Uh, Chris, you had this at. For a second, I thought that somehow I was on drugs of some kind and wrote down five, but I wrote down 0.5. Wow. You were still higher on the show than I was. 0.25 for me. <laughs> I gave it a 0.5. I don't know why I gave it a 0.5. I think um, it was the scene. I don't remember why either. <laughs> I think it was the scene with the daughter. Yeah, but the daughter's so stereotypical too. Her 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 but character you know is that she's a teen. I totally understood what she was saying. Yeah, it's not that hard. But the joke is, so the joke is, said, oh, can you believe this girl? Look how crazy teenagers are. Look how quickly they speak. And it's like, no, if it wasn't you... about the quick speak. I think it was about no, and then the, and then the, the, the scene process. where he said he was banging all his her his wife's friends. Yeah. He was having several extra rounds. That was weird delivery. Too. It was weird delivery, but it was somewhat funny so that's why i gave it the 0.5 it really doesn't deserve the 0.5 but i guess it's just being nice it'll run away with that anyway a zero it, is just it deserves the 0.5 uh, it's a show that was put together <laughs> and scripted the camera's not pointing at the floor <laughs> it's pretty much it's a one out of ten like and seriously some, guys some come poor, on some Stop. poor guy had to edit this thing that's some right. guy went on a foley stage to fill in some uh, fucking sounds that needed to be filled you in. know what's funny is if you look at the graphics for all of these abc comedies they could be they could not be more bland can they be any they more bland? couldn't be i mean they're just like if you were to tell me these are graphics used for comedies in 2003 i would believe you because there is no unique design in any of them there's no you know, interesting quality to all of them. It's just like, oh, they just got a template. Funny, colorful <laughs> just, letters across uh, next to a blue background. It's just a template, though. Lazy. Just, just put it in the template. Like I, I thought the um, the the graphics for the catch, on uh, the drama on ABC. Yes. I thought those were really interesting, where you know the the letters would be moving. They've upwards. given up on on comedies. I think on a lot of on almost every network is pretty much. Well, 
I mean, after Super Fun Night, you kind of have to throw in the towel. Come they on. really, they really not. I, that's right. I'm still going to hit that old chestnut. No, I would take Super Fun Night over this any day. No, Doctor Ken. I would. Too. This, this was. This was. This wasn't offensive in the way that that was offensive. This no. is offensive in that like no one is trying here at all. This at is... least that was edgier than this crap. Yeah, it was no, definitely edgy. Edgy in the stupidest way. Oh. I, I can be edgy if I rub myself with dog feces and run around naked in the street. Doesn't mean they're going to give me a show. No, they wouldn't put that on TV. They might give me a show. Fox. No. That's yeah. a Fox show. That's an ABC show. Like like Ryan Seacrest would host it in the summertime. Be yeah. Like, knock, knock. <laughs> Dog poo free for all with Ryan Seacrest. You actually kind of reminded me, it was because of something you said before, this whole dog poo thing. Yeah. Not because of this. Um, you can deny it. No, it really wasn't because of this. It, uh, I forget what it, was, what it was that you said, but, um, oh, you're talking about the graphics <clears throat> and how it was diff, uh, none of them are any different from each other. Yeah. And that reminded me that I meant to say about, um, Wicked City that I appreciated that it was not, something it didn't seem like something shonda rhimes would have written Mm -hmm. like everything else right because it was a crime drama as opposed to strong female lead fights adversity in some way it just seemed different so i also uh speaking of wicked city for just one second i'm super sick of the trope of uh, trailers for dramas taking like 80 songs and then making them you know moody and dramatic that's why okay that's what uh, because of wicked city yes that's why I thought Stalker, because literally <laughs> Stalker it. did that at the end of every single episode. I liked it because it was interesting to see, oh, which which like classic rock song are they going to, you know, yeah. make into like a moody ballad? But we saw that in the dramas last week also, where some of them were just like, oh, I'm going to turn Karma Chameleon into a dark song. <laughs> I was going to sing it, but it could totally be work. Oh, yeah. For the catch? Sure. Because that Karma's coming back to get him. Catch a chameleon. I'm going to leave that in. Moving right along, yeah. we head over to another comedy that's sure to make people's guts bust, possibly out of enjoyment, uh, The Muppets. That's right. The Muppet Show, or rather, Muppets on TV, is making a return. This isn't called The Muppet Show because The Muppet Show was that variety show from the 1980s that people tended to like. This is slightly different. This is basically a mockumentary-style sitcom Filmed as though all the Muppets work on this late night show. Um, what is it called? Late Night with Miss Piggy? Something like that? Let me look this up here. Uh, it's 30 Rock with the Muppets. It is basically that. Up late with Miss Piggy. Following the Jimmy Kimmel show. So, you know, <laughs> getting that strong lead in of Jimmy Kimmel. Listen, that's a strong lead in. And yeah, basically all the characters, all your famous Muppets have some sort of job on the show. Yeah. Kermit's the executive producer. Miss Piggy's obviously the host. Um, I don't know what Fozzie Bear does. I think Fozzie Bear is her, like, Andy Richter. So, she, like, the sidekick. Yeah. Um, which, actually, that's a good choice for a sidekick. I would pick Fozzie Bear as mine. Waka waka. But, really, the main focus of the show, or the main selling point, is that you get to see the Muppets, but you also get to see their back stories. You know, they get to look into their actual lives. And it's interesting because these Muppets exist in our society. They, they live in our world. They have problems like people... So we see uh, Fozzie Bear trying to propose to a girl or trying to convince her parents that she should be able to date a Muppet. I don't see how it's ever going to work out with you and I. You can say it, Dad. He's a bear. Are you ready? Sort of an adult Muppet show. If you have children, how will you raise them? Where will they go to the bathroom? In the woods? Okay, that is an offensive stereotype. I think it's an interesting concept, but I think it's doomed to fail. Chris, what do you think of the Muppets? Um, I thought it was the muck- the Muckets. <laughs> those are like those are like little puppets made of mops. Yeah, like, that's just no, Muppets made of muck. Those are ninety nine cents store Muppets. Like the like the uh, like the Pokemon muck. Yeah, I yeah, I just think it's the Muppets meets Thirty Rock. Um, I really honestly haven't been interested in the Muppets since I used to watch Muppet Babies in the early nineties. So this is not for me. Um. 
I know that no, thanks. they're obviously, tr- <laughs> no, thank you. They're obviously trying to bank on the success of the Muppet movies, mm-hmm. but, um, I'm sure maybe they'll get, you know, some younger people watching. I mean, it seems like it's, you know, uh, an early enough time where, you know, children would be watching TV. So hopefully I feel like maybe it's going to have that, that dual sense of humor, um, like, some Disney movies have where there's certain things that, you know, older audiences pick up on that mm-hmm. children don't, but there's enough to keep children entertained. Right. Kids are watching the Muppets. Adults are actually listening to the dialogue. Yeah. Yeah. So. And I think it, it's, it makes sense because the Muppets have proven to be a valuable franchise even now. You know, the, the Muppet, both Muppet movies did pretty well. Um, but the issue is here. You're, you're going for this more adult take on the Muppets, but, you can't go full bore and do an Avenue Q or something because one, it's on ABC. It's on at eight o'clock and you have to keep the integrity of these characters for beyond the length of the show because you know that the show probably isn't going to last forever, but the characters on the show will last longer than it. Yeah. So you have to be very, you have to be very safe with it. And then I think doing that, you know, having a safe take on an adult show isn't going to lead to success. Brian, what'd you think? This show is definitely banking on the nostalgia factor and an attempt to try and bring back, um, it's definitely a merchandising move, to be honest, on, on the Muppets part, Jim Henson's part, or not really. Oh, well, he's Henson, been dead for a but while. But the family ownership of it. Yeah. Banking on the popularity of the movies, but it's really meant to try and piggyback on that. Is it Miss Piggyback? Well, there's another Zing! Pick. Point, one point for Chris. Um, but it also introduced it to an audience, um, that grew up on it again, you know? So maybe they're too young to remember it because the last time this was on the air was in the early 80s. Um, it wasn't on until, um, animated until the mid 90s yeah, or early mid 90s. But, Muppet um, babies. Far, I would stay home. Far different. I mean, I tried on to weekends, watch. Just to watch Muppet Babies. I tried to watch the movie with Nathaniel. Yeah. And he wasn't very interested. Because that, that's also trying to, to cash in on nostalgia because you have jokes that are somewhat more adult, albeit in the form of the Muppets. Yeah, he wasn't that interested. I mean, because those, those movies really weren't made with today's kid in mind. He right. gets more enjoyment from something else because it's been designed to be enjoyable right away. Mm. And to try and create either a new franchise or something that is going to be a family staple. I don't think that exists anymore. I mean, TV's changed so much that you're not going to just say, okay, everybody, let's sit in front of TV and watch Muppet Hour. See, that's what I was trying to think of. My, You want to do who would watch this? No, my thought process was, do kids even really, like, is that even a thing anymore? Like, when we were younger, 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock, we would watch TV. Like, we would be watching TV. We'd be watching Seventh Heaven. We'd be watching, you know... Sabrina, we be watching whatever, but Boy Meets World. I just don't know if kids today even do that. Do kids just spend time after dinner, you know, on their computer, watching stuff on Netflix? Well, I mean, the you know, uh, on the uh, internet. I like, would imagine the consumption, the the way they consume media is different, but they still consume media. Yeah, but my question is, are they going to tune in to watch these shows? Tune in, like maybe does not. It, does it? See, does it make sense to even make shows to get them? to watch at that time because are they even going to even if you have a show that's you know this right might be street. better suited for a friday night schedule this Maybe. would be a perfect friday show you have this show followed by is this a half hour an hour this show? is a half hour show Th- this, this will show, be tuesdays by the way tuesdays at eight this show followed by shark tank i think you could have a family sit down and watch all right yeah you, you have you have a you have a bad uh Comedy like Dr. Ken and, and, you know, Last Man Standing Around also for the family. Uh, I, I could see people watching it. Tuesday is a weird time slot and it's up against some stiff competition because you have The Flash it doesn't on make CW. Sense. I think they think, I think that, NCIS is at that time. I they're think they think they're going to get the older audience, which I'm, I'm just I don't questioning. S- I don't see why. Some of the jokes are funny though. No, I, I thought the, I thought I the Fozzie Bear. Do you really want to watch a puppet show? Like, it's, it's almost You're, like they, they, they the were funniest- like trying to go for the Ted audience. Like, no, going for the TED no, audience it's wouldn't. As, it's not as raunchy. Yeah, but that's the TED audience. But it's the same sort of idea where it's you know, you know, 
things that you would associate with childhood mm-hmm. saying things that only adults would say. It just occurred to me that Ted is really just Greg the Bunny. Which is a much better Greg show. Greg the Bunny it was, was great so show. gross, though. Yeah, well, it was a raggedy old bunny. What was that show? Um, I don't think it was Greg the Bunny. The one where uh, the the intro music was uh, Hit the, hit, road, the road Jack. Jack. Is that Greg the Bunny? Wasn't that Greg the Bunny? No, I think that was something else. It was another... Show about a puppet that talked. Then That's the one I'm thinking about. Greg the Bunny was only on for like a season on Fox. The, but that one had... um The one that you're talking about had uh, the guy from... Uh, Seth Green. Seth Green did the voice. I think that might be Greg the Bunny. Then I think they're one of the I same. don't know. Um, Here's the thing. Some of the jokes are funny, as I said. I thought the Fozzie Bear stuff with his girlfriend was funny, where he's telling her parents that that's an offensive line when she, when they say, you're dating a Muppet. Uh, I thought that the, the Gonzo stuff was funny, where he's like, we shouldn't do a mockumentary. That's a, such a tired old format where somebody says something into the camera, and then you it cut to it. Gonzo. Sh- it was Gonzo. No, it wasn't. Who was it, then? That was Kermit. That was Gonzo. No, that was Gonzo. Kermit the was one with... saying it. No, Gonzo, Gonzo was saying it. Gonzo's the one with the curly nose. No, but I thought it was Kermit that was saying it. No, Gonzo was saying it to Kermit. Hey, how about we film a series in that crazy handheld documentary style and have cutaways to one-on-one interviews? Cut to interviews? That is just a totally overused device to make easy jokes. You know, talking to the camera about how you really feel and then cutting back and saying something completely different. I just hate that. I love it. Great device. I thought that was funny anyway, but there are some there are some unsuccessful jokes. There's the one where Kermit says, "Oh, look at my new girlfriend," and it's a pig, and it's like, "Oh, I, I, what can I say? I love pigs." Uh, didn't make me laugh. I think this show is going to have a lot of issues, even given its popularity and the po- popularity of the characters. Anything else, Ed? You want to go to ratings? Unhappily ever after. That's what the show was. Yeah. Ah, uh, I used to watch Unhappily Ever After. I remember watching it, but I don't remember anything about the show. Was Seth Green on Unhappily Ever After? No, it was, that was Greg the Bunny. Kevin Connolly. Seth Green was on Greg the, Greg Bunny. the Bunny. I didn't watch Greg the Bunny. I used to watch. It was Happily only on for a couple after. episodes. Uh, Unhappily Ever After had the the redheaded daughter. Nikki Cox. Yeah. Yeah. That's the only reason I remember the show. Uh, Nikki Cox. Didn't she have that show later on where she was married to a wrestler? On it was called Nikki, wasn't it? On um on the WB, she was married to a professional wrestler and she was a a, a dancer in Las it Vegas. Was Nikki? Yeah, yeah. That was a. I love that show because of professional wrestling. Um, Chris, what'd you Rating have? One. What'd you have? The Muppet Show. I on? gave it a one. One. I had this at a one point two five. One and a half. Off. One and a half. Yeah. Just because the amount of time and effort involved in creating a show with puppets or Muppets in this case. Um, and it's the Muppets, Muckets, it's yeah. Kermit, it's Miss Piggy. I couldn't give Gonzo. two shits about them anymore. I, like, I, I think they're fun to watch do a three minute skit on like the Thanksgiving Day Parade. Or a special. If they had decided, hey, let's do some specials throughout the year. You got a Thanksgiving special, you got a Christmas special. Like a variety got... show. Or a variety show. That would have been a great idea too. But <laughs> They could have literally just redone the Muppet show. <laughs> they should have just redone the Muppet show. Didn't but... they try that a couple years ago? I don't know. I feel like they did. Maybe think, they did. Maybe they did like a one-time thing. But I would have loved to see like, oh, here's it, Kermit think, and then Kermit saying. I think saying... that translated into the mo- success of the movies. Mm-hmm. But the the whole point is that how much do I really need to see these Muppets? Right. Is a movie enough Not at or all. do I need to see it every week? And I don't think there's enough demand to say a 30-minute episode every for 13 episodes even. Yep. Uh, Very good. Moving right along, uh, The Real O'Neills. Um, oh, God, I forgot about that one. That's right. Catholicism was, takes a weird turn. I was excited. I think we were almost done. Over at ABC. We got a couple more to go. I was excited. I thought we were done. That's, I said almost done. I thought done. I could go home. When when this show ends, that'll be the, uh, the last audio clip played. <laughs> I thought we were done here. Um, Brian, you get to tell us about The Real O'Neills. The Real O'Neills is like a weird amalgam of some of these shows we've seen because this show is very um, kind of cherry-picked. They took different elements from different shows that may or may not have worked and kind of trying to channel a little bit of the middle in That's that kind, uh, kind of feel in terms of the dynamic of the family. Obviously, it's the, the, the parents mm-hmm. are very in control. It took things from the Goldbergs. The Goldbergs. It took the things McCarthy's. from the McCarthy's, which I definitely. Well, I mean, obviously the gay Catholics. Sons. Um, Catholics. <laughs> but that whole th- that's what the show felt like. It was 
almost like a Netflix meeting. Okay, let's see what everyone really likes, and we'll see what works. We hear people have been talking about Kevin Connolly lately. We hear people like that woman from Raising Hope. So, yeah. um, she was nominated a, for an Emmy. It's an interesting approach. I, I, I like, um, I, I enjoyed what I saw. I thought it, it could be funny and it could find, it could definitely get traction in the fact that it already has the middle, already has the Goldbergs, but the problem is now it's too crowded. There are too many of the similar type Kill shows. Off people. So, Time to send Anthony Anderson to the unemployment line. So is, is it diff- is it different enough that you're going to remember the show or is it going to be something like, you know, that's just on and you're having to watch it? Um, I like the dynamic between the overbearing father and the mother. Mm-hmm. Uh, all the kids have secrets. Nothing is perfect. And that's the whole secrets point of the show. Right. And I like that the kids have one thing about them that defines their... Um, personality their personality right so the girl the youngest daughter is very into helping others but she's really a thief a thief <laughs> and she really wants to steal uh, and keep this money um the son which the oldest son they don't focus on at all pretty much except for the fact that he's anorexic even mm-hmm. though he's a big sports star and he should be this big tough guy but he's really so focused i guess on how he looks that he's anorexic or has developed this anorexia the middle son, which is pretty much the key or the linchpin to this whole dynamic. I think he might be the youngest one. No, he's yeah. not the youngest, is he? Yeah, no. I think so. I think I think the daughter is older. I thought the daughter was younger. I, I, I think I think he's fourteen, and I think she's supposed to be sixteen. I thought she was younger. It makes more oh, no, sense. If she's I, younger. Yeah, I think she's younger only because she looks younger. All right. Well, anyway, go ahead. Well, whatever. Okay. Either way, he's the linchpin of this whole thing. Where it turns out, and and it was interesting if it's done in a way that's comedic, but yet could also be i'm not gonna say groundbreaking but could be um transformational for people to see what someone trying to come out right. even if it's not a dramatic way mm-hmm. but in a, in a comedic way could help people understand what could be going through people's right. minds this this kid realizes he knows he's gay he's been trying to tell his parents but he can't because they're very conservative and catholic and all this other stuff and it, and the way it happens, it comes out in front of literally everybody, and it's 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 comedic. I I thought it was funny, and it, it it could, like I said, it could be a good vehicle to kind of push this conversation. The problem is, is it, is it re- if it relies too much on him being gay, mm-hmm. then yeah. the show's not going to do well. You got the same you got the same worry I did. I, I I appreciate, as you said, the um the writers covering issues that aren't normally talked about in a family and, and bringing that discussion into a family things like you know being gay at a younger age things like male anorexia which isn't talked about a lot it's usually just associated with girls those are important to cover i guess theft is also good to throw in there but i don't want to see these characters all the jokes they're involved with solely be involved about their issues i want to see them b- become real full characters most importantly i don't want to see this 14 year old boy who's, who's gay all of his jokes revolve around being gay i think we got enough of that from will and grace i understand that talking about real stuff isn't something we do but we're gonna start now, Kenny, this morning you had a very healthy sexual appetite and now you don't ever want to sleep with a woman is that something you'd like to talk about not a chance okay but i'm coming back to you and i'll go first Pat. your Thank mother you. and i are in therapy we've been going every tuesday night for a year why are you in therapy we're getting a divorce come on who's next somebody I'm anorexic. What? I haven't sent any of that money to Ethiopia. What about you, Kenny? I'm gay. What? I think Kenny said he's gay. Unfortunately, the acoustics in here are amazing. Do you want this open or closed? I'll close it. Let him being gay be part of his personality, but don't let it be his personality. I'll say this also. I don't think I laughed once watching this. I was not impressed at any of the comedy. I thought this felt really... It felt like it fell right where ABC wanted it to, right in the middle of like suburgatory and blackish, right where they wanted to in their schedule. I think this is exactly what they wanted, something that is not too edgy. Right. Um, but it's the oatmeal of comedies, you know, it'll, it, it'll oatmeal. fill you up. No. It'll fill you up. It's, it's not quite the oatmeal. It's, it's fine. Cinnamon, it's oatmeal with strawberries. It's, cinnamon oatmeal. It's got some spice. It's like the oatmeal that they tell you has sprinkles in it somewhere. Who put sprinkles in oatmeal? No one. Why would they lie? Because they're trying to tell you that it's more fun than it actually is. Okay. But it's still oatmeal. It's 
still oatmeal. It's not, it's not hey, scrambled eggs. Listen, it's like the oatmeal that remember the dinosaur oatmeal that the dinosaur. They still make that. Yeah. Oh my that's god, that's the kind of oatmeal. Just, just please, it's still please fucking oatmeal. Talk about the idea of it is making me want to vomit. I never right. had it, and I always thought it was kind of gross. It's good. <laughs> uh, I wouldn't touch it. It's made with real dinosaur. Oh well. <laughs> god, the, the Quaker Oats Company knows where to get those brontosauri. Speaking of sore eyes, my eyes bothering me a little. Chris, use clear eyes. <laughs> ben Stein over here. Uh, what do you think, Chris? I wish I had his money. I really. I wish I was Ben Stein. I wanted this to be good, but it just kind of hit. <laughs> I would love if you won. I wanted this to be good, and it was. <laughs> it just moving kind, on. It just kind of missed the mark for me. Um, I don't know if it was the fact that like what Brian appreciated, and that everyone is a specific, identifiable character. Yeah. Characteristic or the, defined they're just, character? They have one identifying factor. That yeah. kind of always bothers me because that's what defines you as a person is that one feature. It's a two-dimensional way of telling stories. And that's really, oh, uh, it's really like, oh, that's, uh, you know, that's the gay one. That's the drunk one. That's the abusive one. That's the steely like, one. The steely one. That's really, I, I don't know. I just don't like that in books. I don't like that in TV, but I understand that. For a trailer, for something like this, you kind of have to mm. do it that way. And on top of that, in comedies, especially when you have so many people, you kind of do have to give them. But it's like, it always bothers me when it's like, oh, that's the fat friend. That's the right. black this friend. This show always knows what it's doing because. Nerdy friend. This show knows what it's doing at least because they have three kids. Like any good, and logical sitcom family. There are yeah, three. Dr. Ken. Fucking can't even get that right. Watch a sitcom, Dr. Ken Kim. Jung. Kim Jong. <laughs> Ru- ruin North Korea can't even flip on the channel. Anyway. Um, um, I will say this. I didn't think any of this stuff was funny, but I did write down, I can imagine that some dull Wyoming family will find this edgy and shocking. And that's probably what they're hoping are you for. putting them down now? Fine. Some dull family not from Wyoming. From <laughs> Kentucky. <laughs> see, well, see, now he's doing why it. Why are you... They're from somewhere. Ohio. They're not from America because USA okay. They're from Ohio. Uh, they are, and they're the best. We're just And we love them and no, we look forward to calling them. They're soon. from West Virginia. <laughs> um Okay, stop yes. talking right now. So they're from New York. Indiana. Some dull no, just some dull family. People who are dull. Not like the exciting not, people from New they're York. They're not dull. No, people this, watching it. They would think it was edgy. I think yeah. in terms of the idea, I really do like it. Mm-hmm. Um I think I just, I, it felt a lot like the middle to me, and I don't like the middle. Yeah. So that oh. kind of, but if you like, the, mi- the like middle's the really middle. hit If you miss. like the middle, yeah. I think the middle's Then funny. I think this would be good for you. Yeah. If you, if you like those Tuesday or Wednesday night ABC comedies, you're going to be probably fine with this. This is if right you, in your wheelhouse. Yeah. Right in your wheelhouse. If yep. you like the McCarthy's, but thought, hey, I wish there were younger kids. Hey, it was too funny. Yeah. Then, no, I mean, the McCarthy's was maybe a little edgy. Tyler Ritter does too good a job. This is, I don't know. I don't know what this is. But it is meh. It's a very meh. Yeah. Uh, one last I point. Did, oh, wait, I did like the scene where he's in the bathroom. Yes. I, I really like the way that they did it. Uh-huh. Just because I thought it was funny. But it seems like you're going to be doing a lot of that where uh, the person who's having some sort of issue or, or trouble will see their issue in front of them nobody knows this we've been dating for six months and you've never once pressured me to have sex which is why i want to have sex father phil's downstairs and he's wearing his collar i don't care i'm half jewish wow it's 48 condoms 12 didn't seem like enough are you sure you understand how they work come out kenny yeah kenny why don't you come out what are you doing in my mirror shirtless cologne model I can't come out. Have you ever met my mom? She put a statue of the Virgin Mary over the toilet so we'd remember to put the seat down. That's intense. You're intense. (laughs) I can do this. You have it on yet? Does it fit? Nope, can't do this. It wasn't just me, right? Jesus was at the Jesus was at the table, yeah. I think that was kind of funny. Yes, and of course in the bathroom, the gay son sees uh, his, uh, sees a, a nude, what is cologne model? I think it was a cologne model. In the, uh, in the mirror as he's attracted to him, but he can't tell his family. I thought the weirder part of that scene was him saying to the clone model that his mother put a statue of the Virgin Mary above, above the toilet, the toilet, to toilet seat. So that everyone would put the seat down? Or exactly, yeah, yeah. To, to put the seat down. A couple of things. 
if you're a Catholic, you're not going to do that because, one, that's a terrible place to put a statue. It's probably going to fall because people sit down, stand up, the thing shakes, and maybe it falls. I mean, it was a pretty solid Virgin Mary. Even then, there's bound to be splashback. This is a teenage boy's how bathroom. How high are you peeing? Splashing happens sometimes. Now you know why I sit Do down. You know how pee. often she goes in with the Lysol. Still, the Virgin Mary is likely to get some splashback. I mean, and if you're a Catholic, you don't want that. I felt like that. it would have made more sense to put like a picture of the Virgin Mary yes. than a whole statue, or a picture of the Virgin Mary on the inside of like the toilet seat cover. So it's so like it, that seems that's like even worse. sacrilegious. It's more Al. That's like super sacrilegious. No, not Al. like on the seat, but like on the part that comes down. Like if you see the Virgin Mary, She's you have a problem. Staring at your piss all the time. Yeah, and then, you should use the devil. Really, you should use the devil. Because like if you can see the devil, then you have issues. So put your goddamn no, seat down. But you have to respect the Virgin Mary, which is why you put the seat down. Because you look up and you're like, oh, I'm sorry, Virgin Mary. I'll do the right thing and put the seat down. That's it's it's an okay joke, but. Once you think it out, like you should with any good joke. The semantics of it. Doesn't work. Once you tear it apart, like all jokes need to be. That's right. Overanalyzing is really the the key point of comedy. Let's go to ratings here. Chris, what did you have this? I gave this a one. I also had this at a one. This will be going wow. to the mid-season, I gave it a two and a quarter. Wow. Well, you. <laughs> have different tastes. I don't know. I get enough Catholicism at home. I just. Yeah, we have enough Virgin not Mary that, statues not lying that you around. Don't, not, not that I'm saying that you don't. Just like. Yeah. It's not like your mom works at a church or something. We have like freaking effigies over there. Effigies. No. I'm, I'm pretty we sure don't if burn I reach them. out, we I can <laughs> touch a Jesus. Yeah, we have, we have a burning like, cross. Like literally in my eyes, in my eye line right now, there are three, four Virgin Marys. Keeping an eye on the toilet. So That's they right. are outside the door. So right when you come out of the bathroom, it's like, oh wash shit. Wash your hands. Did you, did you wash your hands and put the toilet seat down? <laughs> no. Mom is so clever. They're a smart bunch, those Catholics. Except yeah, I, I think, listen. I think you know where you're getting with this. It's it's not meant to be anything groundbreaking. Only thing I hope it's if it's on for thirteen episodes or twenty six episodes or not really, but thirteen. Thirteen episodes and someone gets some use out of it. People get paid. What are you gonna do? It's oatmeal. This is better yeah, it's definitely oatmeal, but this is edible. I feel this like is not like Dr. Ken, which is like burnt toast and It's not oatmeal. It's oatmeal. No. This is oatmeal. It's like this is Adirond. Fine, it's oatmeal with raisins. No, it's like Cheerios, but not Honey Nut Cheerios. No, it's like I like those. Your regular plain Cheerios. Those are great. So it's the same thing with hey, oatmeal. That's right, because babies will no, love this. No, I would show. rather eat Cheerios. Oatmeal is fucking gross. Oh, I, I well, is... I would much rather eat oatmeal. Ew. Oatmeal okay. is great. The reality is, this is oatmeal with a little bit of something. Yeah, it's, it's got some cinnamon, raisins in it. Raisins. It's got something, but you don't really want it. It's well, like, oh, great, raisins. We well, don't know if you're excited about this. having it. <laughs> Analogies. Talking way too long about oatmeal. Talking way too long about this goddamn show. True. You guys all gave your ratings? Yes. yes. All right. I'm coming out. I want the world to know. I got to let it show. I'm coming out. I want the world to know. I got to let it show. Last but not least, folks. Um, the best of the bunch. That's questionable. Uh, Uncle Buck. Uncle not, Buck. Not really. Come on. If you were around... Well, I did give us the highest rating, but aside from... Uh, if you had City, to pick one to pick from. Comedies. Comedy? I would watch this, but I probably yeah. still would enjoy it that much. If you had one to pick one from both ABC and Fox. Comedies? Yeah. Oh, no. Grinder. I'd watch Grinder above this. I would as well. Oh, yeah. I forgot about Grindr. Ah, see? Anyway, Uncle Buck is what we're talking about here. Folks, if you've watched movies in the 1980s, late 1980s, 1989, right around, or if you watched television in 1990... You probably know what's going on here. Uh, it was originally a movie with John Candy. Then they brought it to television. It didn't do so well. Uh, they're trying to bring it back here on ABC. And the story centers around this character of Uncle Buck, who will get called by his brother and his wife because they need him to babysit. And co figure, he's just a terrible babysitter. He's the last person you would call as a babysitter. Cat in the hat's pretty bad. But he has a darling hat. He knows a lot about that. He does. And he's got that car. And he knows not only thing two, but also thing one. Need that thing one. That sounded wrong. Um, so yeah, basically the story goes, Uncle Buck gets called. He moves in with the family. And here, um, he becomes the family's manny. Male nanny, if you will. 
So he lives, he lives at the house. He watches the kids. And of course he does everything wrong. Uh, he takes them to a bar, even though that they're young. Uh, one he, of them gets picked up and goes off to a party. Right. This wild house party breaks out at his, at their house where we get the only funny. It wasn't at their house. It was at their house. I thought it was at someone else's house. No, it was at their house, I think. I'm pretty sure it was at someone else's house. I think it would be funny if it was she at their left. House. I think she left with the, another guy and they went to the house party. Okay, maybe. House party breaks out and we get the one funny line about drugs. Yep. It was a different house for the house party. It was a good line though, you know, uh, this party sucks. Drug stores closed. That was an Altoid. Come on, who gives a kid cocaine? It's donuts. Altoids and donuts. This party's lame. Lame. And the visual with the the powder donuts and the and yeah. the Altoids. Cocaine. It's all good. It's not co- it's not cocaine. It's donuts. Um, <laughs> I, I think that and again, a little girl on his shoulders. Yeah, that's hilarious. And of course, by the end of the episode, he's uh he's scaring the oldest daughter's uh or rather the oldest niece's uh boyfriend away by taking photos of him naked, which is called child pornography, folks. If you're trying to scare your daughter's boyfriend away, don't do that. You'll go to jail. Right? Jail. That's where they send him. Ask Jared. <laughs> Ooh, cut that out. Oh. <laughs> Ooh. Anyway, uh, it's I'm not I was not crazy about the show either. Um, at the end of the day, it's another relatively bland ABC Family sitcom that's right in the wheelhouse of anyone who watches something like Blackish. If you want to see black characters basically telling very simple jokes but overacting, you know, being loud, which is what every show with black comedians likes to do, is okay. Listen, here's your lines. Okay, uh, can I just say these? No. <laughs> no. We need you to over uh, over scream these and make this really loud, even though it's not entirely necessary. Yeah, because no one else does that. Christella. <laughs> no, but her was, hers was like, okay, we need you to say this in a weird accent. And it's she's not, saying it to herself. It's not a black thing. It it's is, just, though. No, it's been done for years on comedies. So. But it's done almost exclusively by African-American um, actors. I'm not blaming them. Remember Louie Anderson? No. I, I, luckily, no. no. Anderson Anderson. Joke, I remember That's because he had a weird voice. Yeah, but no, it was the way he would like screech things sometimes. And it was just, you know, that's what was funny. That's one. I can literally just, just pick any black sitcom and you can see what's happening there. As where if you pick something like, I don't know, The Office, it's not happening there. Even though there are black characters on The Office. It's it's lazy writing, it is what it is. But Chris, what did you think of Uncle Buck? I liked it. I thought I did think it was the best comedy of the bunch. Um, I thought uh, Mike Epps was really funny. I liked his delivery. Um, I, I didn't particularly like the parents. I thought mm-hmm. they were very vanilla. Right. Um, and the kids... As opposed to Mike Epps' chocolate. Wow. That'll all be good. I liked his chocolate. That that's the show title. Uh yeah, you're saying. Um, I and I didn't think the kids were particularly awesome, except for the little girl. She was pretty funny. Mm-hmm. I think th- it was something that she said when the she boy, was on his shoulders. The boy was good too. That I really liked. Yeah, he, I, yeah. It was it was pretty much the team. I'll say this: in preparation for this, I actually watched the pilot of the 1990 Uncle Buck series, which is available on YouTube if you want to check it out, and. A lot of people will tell you that that show was really bad and shouldn't have... It was just deplorable and never watch it. I liked it better than this. But you love shitty 90s shows. No, no, but I'll tell you why. Because a key difference between these this show and that show is that in uh, that Uncle Buck, the parents actually died. And Uncle Buck has to basically... He was left them... He was left his nieces and his nephew in the will. That's been done to death well but this was 20 years ago but yeah like since then that's like every freaking movie oh the wild uh the wild party girl is left with two children and has to raise them i mean it's it's been and and literally he was just doing like a an oscar madison character but i think the thing is there that idea actually made you sympathize more with uncle buck and want to see him succeed as we're here it's just like look at this guy who shouldn't be doing what he's doing but is allowed to keep doing what he's doing i don't I don't feel like I have to sympathize with him. I don't feel like I need to... But I think that built a greater interest in the character and a greater relationship between the viewer and the character. I mean, honestly, in terms of the way it's it's set up, he's doing them a favor. They need a babysitter, and he is filling in 
Um, so really, I don't expect him to change his lifestyle, especially, I mean, in the pilot, because at this point, he's not the Manny. Yeah. I don't expect him to change his lifestyle to, you know, sort of fit in um, these kids. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know. I just, I liked it. I, whatever, whatever the line was, I really honestly don't remember that the little girl said when she was on his shoulders. I liked the delivery. I like, like I said, I liked Mike Epps. Um, I will say this also. I think that watching that series and then watching this one, uh, the acting quality of children has grown exponentially since 1990. Yeah. Oh my god, the kids on that show. The youngest girl here, uh, I think the character's name is, um, Maisie. I think the, the littlest girl is named Maisie. That, all, the names actually have stayed the same since the movie. But, and the son's name is Miles, and I forget, I think the oldest daughter is Tia or something. Um, the car- the girl who played Maisie in 1990 was a terrible actress. <laughs> this one is actually really good, and the yeah. and the kid who plays Miles is really good too. The my issue with the the teen daughter thing is I feel like it's been done so much, like that whole that like um God what was that My Wife and Kids Yeah I feel like that but, show really did uh, so much with the whole like daughter father relationship, like teen daughter and then the boyfriend mm-hmm. that anything I see from. Like, it's just been done so much to Go me. Go watch Dr. Ken. It's, this is basically what we're seeing but here. You know? that was such... That was a really good show compared to this. It's shocking how similar the the, uh, the pilot for this and the pilot for Dr. Ken are when you look at the story. Older girl breaks away from person she watching didn't have them. anything to do with boys. Oh, well, I guess she did at the rave. Yeah. And there's also drug references. Anyway, my issue was more that... I. I don't know. It kind of bothered me that there's like the white family show, the black family show, the Asian, Asian family, family fresh off the boat. It was like, when are we going to see some mixed race families? I'm pretty sure somebody at ABC is going, damn it. If we could only give kept Christella, we'd have had them all. We, I just <laughs> next season, Native American family show pitch titles. I'm like, I don't understand why there has to be this Red in the distinct face. separation. <gasps> it's pretty good. I don't understand why. No, I is. agree with you. I think a mixed race family would be interesting and somewhat fresh, especially in a sitcom. I mean, you heard it here first. We get the money, and we also have the rights to Red in the Face, the Native American sitcom. Wait, that would get canceled so quickly. I get think renamed so quickly. It, what? But what if it's a mixed race show where the father is Native American, but the mother is white, and her father, like, builds like builds on Native American reservations. And like, there's that conflict there, or or maybe he builds on that Native American more... burial sites. Even better. That sounds more like episodes of like Dynasty or something. But you mean great? It sounds great. Sure. <laughs> look look forward in 2016, folks. Red in the face. And by the way, send all your uh, complaints to uh, Antenna underscore Heads on Twitter. Yeah, I just I just don't like the whole rigid structure that they have in terms of this is the black family this is the white family yeah. this is i mean i i'm i'm white so i don't know if uh, in case you couldn't tell i don't know if black people like having black comedies and being able to identify like this is a family like mine this is I mean, I don't know. I imagine I really, it, it, I it, hey, it's what led Fox's success in the 1990s was other networks were really aiming towards white audiences and black audiences were, you know, they, they weren't being taken care of. So Fox created a set of shows to appeal to black audiences and it worked. I mean, um, living single, of course. Personally, of I loved watching UPN Martin. growing up. <laughs> yeah. No I loved watching UPN. I did not like watch. The only reason I watched UPN was because of Monday, uh, rather Thursday night SmackDown. And I would always tune in half an hour early and have to watch that terrible Jamie Foxx sitcom i watched so much upn like girlfriends i watched uh one-on-one veronica mars was also on upn yeah but i mean i watch a lot of black tv shows on upn i used to watch soul train (laughs) i loved watching soul train i watched moesha i watched the parkers i watched you said one-on-one sister sister well that was a cw or wb show right which one sister sister Sister. 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 smart guy yeah smart guy i loved uh, Family Matters. Yeah, yeah. Well, who didn't like Family Matters? But I, I feel like Family like... Matters was written by white people. Oh, God. Most of those were probably written by white Pro- people. I don't know. Yeah. Smart Guy was probably written by white people also. Sister, sister. Sister, sister. Sister, sister. Still a great show. 
<laughs> Jack A. Harry. All right. Uh, anything else to add here? I just want to say this one last thing. Jack I a. don't think this will have a lot of lasting power because I think the all, all the zany things that Uncle Buck, Mike Epps will do on the show will get pretty boring over time. Like in this preview, we see right at the end when the parents get home that there are these giant pancakes. Uh, oh, yeah, on, like, on the like counter, counter size pancakes. Right, that's that's actually from the movie, from the, and movie the TV yeah. show also. But I think stuff How like that. How would you make those pancakes? You gotta watch the movie. Like, that takes not. way too much work. You flip them with a uh, snow shovel. No, I mean where? Where? Would you I don't make know. Them? You put a big metal like. Know, you gotta watch the movie metal. to find out. You do, John Candy. I don't have to watch it. Don't tell me what I have to. do. <laughs> Al can just tell me. <laughs> anyway, I, I think it's gonna all that stuff will really wear pretty quickly on the audience, and this doesn't have the potential to go multiple. No, seasons. because you need you need that next layer, and it's either the parents, it's the kids, but in this case, it's it essentially relies around Uncle Buck. Mm-hmm. Uncle Buck is the wild card, and he's got to be wild and zany for everything to be funny. Yep. And um, it's not that great. It's here. not gonna be that great. He's funny at times, but. No, listen, this is the it's best of the bunch, but the problem is that there's no, as Al said, there's no staying power. There's nothing here that's going to say, hey, I want to see three seasons of this. That's right. Let's see what uh, Brian thought this deserved to be rated at. Brian, your rating on this. I gave this a two and a half. Two and a half. This will be coming at the midseason also. I had this at a 1.75. I had this at a 1.5. And I feel like I was probably highest on the show. <laughs> like I was probably like... You, you liked it the most. I, yeah. I, I, I think, think it was the best out of the comedies, I think personally. They'll, they'll get probably their highest ratings for a new, show, a new comedy in, in this. Mm-hmm. Um, whether that translates into a full It also depends episodes. where they position. The, smart, if they were smart, they'd put this right after um, Blackish. Or right before Blackish. Create that hour block. That power hour? That, that African-American power hour. All right. Uh, those are the comedies for ABC. Uh, as you heard a second ago, Chris liked this the most and gave it a 1.5. So I can tell you what he thought of the rest of the comedies and how successful ABC's comedy future is. Not very. Is no, answer. I don't think it's very good at, at all. No. Um, but next week we'll be starting a whole new network. You guys want to do NBC or CBS? I'm going to let you pick on the show. Oh, I don't know. I'm not going to tell you what the shows are, but NBC, NBC or CBS? NBC, Brian? Actually, NBC might be stronger. Maybe we should finish with NBC. Uh, I think CBS is probably going to have the strongest shows. But CBS is comedies. Oh, uh, no, there's some dramas there. No, but I mean, they're comedies. Blow. Oh, yeah. So let's do CW next. We can do CW, but I don't even know how many. They have a couple. It's probably just a one show. Anyway. Yeah, it'd be one. You want to do CW? Sure. Okay. Next week, folks, as you only, heard here, it's going to be interesting. Only because you didn't say it. That's why I said, oh, fuck it. Let's just do CW. They right. get some outlandish shit. Uh, next week, because I was planning to do it last. Uh, oh, so let's save it for last. No, no, we're doing it now. Yeah, what? let's do NBC then. I'll have to cut all this out. Uh, <laughs> I, don't, I don't care. Honestly. So, folks, you guys want to do NBC next week? Sure. Yeah. There you go. That was the first time we said that. Ne- there was no part rehearsing cut out of this <laughs> podcast. There's no rehearsing there. Uh, so next week we'll be, we'll be starting NBC and we'll start with dramas again as we have with uh, the prior network. So look forward to that. But until then, a couple of questions to ask. A couple of uh, preguntas, if you will. I'm that white. Is that, is that Spanish or Portuguese? It's a, it's a, it's, and it's a mix, you know. It's like it's like one of those packets that you buy to put you on your chicken. It's a mix. <sighs> Not all the jokes can be aces. Some of them can be Uncle Bucks. Chris, a couple questions here. Doctor Ken's. <laughs> Fuck oh, off. Oh, wow. The worst of my jokes is in a Doctor Ken. Oh yeah, it is. Oh, Jesus Christ. It's worse. You, you still like Headhunter though, right? That was a good joke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Joke of the night. <laughs> I, I I wrote the other two first. And I'm like, God, I need a third one. What's gonna be? I need a better one. I I had to I had to search for like. Uh, synonyms for blowjobs. Like, Come on, Joe Blow was Well, good. I know what to do here. Joe Blow. All right, Chris. Yep. Tell us about chrisconquers.com. What's going on there? It's a website it where is. you can find Chris. And her things. writings? Yes. About beauty? Yes. And books. That's right. And uh, as it says on the uh, the card, which I don't My have. Card. She's a beauty and book blogger. No, it says book and beauty. My mistake. Uh, cut that Failure. out. Book and beauty blogger. Uh, you yeah. can read all of her posts over at chrisconquers.com. All the interesting things going up there in terms of makeup, in terms of novel reviews. So much more going on there. Chrisconquers.com. Uh, also, follow her on Twitter at chrisconquers. Follow her on Instagram at chrisconquers. Brian. Oh. B911B.com has never been hotter. Nikon wants to get in on the business. Um, what's going on over there? 
That's oh, exciting things. What's your secret potion that gets these Hashtag. camera manufacturers coming in? Uh, picture. The picture. JPEGs. Not JPEGs. You probably use, uh. I use raw files yeah. and then go, I, uh, a stupid fucking Lightroom only goes to TIFF files and then. You, you can't take raw images on, uh, on Android yet, can you? No, or on. Or uh, iOS. Well, you could, you can on Windows Phone. Ah. Uh. Can on Windows, man. Right? But you can't use any apps. No, <laughs> right. Instagram. No, you can use Photoshop. They have Photoshop for Windows. Can you use Instagram. Instagram, yes. You can use. Uh, there, there is an Instagram. You, there is Instagram, but there isn't many other apps. No. So the the process is usually uh, Lightroom first because it's a raw file, so mm-hmm. I'll have to convert it to some use, other usable file. Could, um, and then to get it on my phone, I like using Flickr because then I could post it on Flickr at full size, yep. full um, original size resolution. So you can see full resolution. Then I can download it from Flickr, but to get it on Flickr to not lose any of that detail that Lightroom gives in TIFF, it automatically fucking converts it to a shitty JPEG. Mm. So then to circumvent that, I have to then convert the TIFF file to a PNG file, Uh. which now Nathaniel helps me. He types in PNG (laughs) for me um, every time I need to convert a file. Um, It retains... All of the information in the raw, it's it's um, it's very compressed. Yeah, but it's a new ver- fangled version of compression. PNGs, that, PNGs, PNGs are supposed to be way better than and JPEGs. The, the yeah. quality is fantastic. I've been very happy with with what's left, and the file size is compared to a TIFF file is like a tenth. Especially if you have to post like a fo- like an image with uh, text on it. Yeah, you need a PNG because it, it adds it's the edges and the detail that it keeps that yep. you lose on a JPEG. JPEG just kind of blurs the whole shit. There fuck. you go, folks. Look behind the mirror. Uh, check out all of Brian's very interesting photos. Nikon approved, in fact, over at uh, B911B.com. B911B photo on Instagram. B911B22 on Twitter. And follow on Instagram. I'm slowly but steadily approaching 1,000 followers. There you go. He's big, big shit. What you want a big shit. Please, yeah. please. Not even close. You don't even have a quarter of that yet. You're so. you're a quarter shit then, Calm as yourself. Chris would say. Um, Chris, I'm a quarter shit apparently. <laughs> what does that make me? I don't know. Just shit. You're not even just shit. Plain old. Uh, Chris, mm-hmm. one last question. If somebody wants to tell us what their favorite photo format is, not the easiest thing in the world to say. Where can they do that? Um, hopefully in nowhere. <laughs> I'm not really interested. In that don't place. tell us. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but if you want to tell us anything else, like, I like JPEGs. Oh, fuck off! All right, <laughs> you, you're wrong. Um, you can. If you want to tell, tell us you you're wrong. whether or not you thought Uncle Buck was Uncle fucking terrible. I've been saving that one for a while. No, nope. I saw Buck and I'm like, well, you went, uh, you went for the easy one. Uncle part. Uncle Suck would have been so much better. No, Uncle Suck is uh, Wicked City. What? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's terrible. That's a good one. Come on. Come Not on. as good as Headhunter. You were saying, Chris. <sighs> well, you can reach us at antenna underscore heads on Twitter. You can listen to our old episodes and new episodes and future episodes. Not ahead of time because we don't do that. Magic doesn't but exist. <laughs> when they become new episodes, you can listen to them on broadcast.com. You've been doing this for like 40 episodes now. I know. I always, it's always different. It always is, different. Certainly. Um, you can also listen to us on SoundCloud, TuneIn, Stitcher, iTunes, and on YouTube. And please subscribe if you, you know. Please do. Listen to us on YouTube because that's, we like to know that people are listening to us yeah. and give us a thumbs up if you can and you can rate us in all those other places as well because you know letting us know that you like us is good for our sanity and good for our souls and you know making other people more self-confident is always a nice thing to do right. so share the love share it thank you very much chris and with that there's one last thing to do just one thing that's the last it has to be done one last thing to do brian take care of it so for Christina and Alex, thank you for listening to our review or final review of the ABC Upfronts. Um, this is episode 98 of Antenna Heads. <laughs>